Hi everyone, it's Debbie the Choice Factor and Baxter. Say hi Baxter. <laughs> and I'm here for Journey to Health Collab week number seven. And I'm gonna go right into the question because I have an interesting perspective on this question for this week. And the question is, for whom are you being healthy and well? For whom are you doing that? Are you doing that for yourself or are you doing that for society? So I think that's really interesting and I think people automatically tend to gravitate knee-jerk reaction. Of course I'm doing it for myself. Of course I'm not doing it for society. And that is the right answer and that's the answer that we all want to get to. But I don't think it's as easy as it seems to just think, of course I'm doing it for me. I think that we really can be, um, <laughs> Baxter is playing with his toy, hence the noise in the background. I think that is something that we need to get to. I don't think all of us start out on our journey saying, this is for me, I'm 100% doing this for me, I'm not influenced by society or anyone in society. Speaking for myself, there were several different situations and several different people in my life that I was trying to impress or trying to please or trying to meet a condition. I, I can think right off the top, there was one situation, I was in college, it was the weirdest situation. I had a, a friend, she was my best friend and she decided one day after a year or so of being really close friends, that she couldn't have a fat friend. <laughs> so she ended our friendship and she literally said the reason is because she didn't know how to have a fat friend. So of course I'm thinking, oh my gosh, in order to have a friend and retain a friendship, I have to be at a certain weight. Now granted, that was when I was walking around at about 180 pounds, but even so, you know, so I thought, okay, so a condition for friendship is to be at a decent weight. There were several relationships that I had with guys where they would put that condition on me. You're so pretty, you're so nice, you're so fun, but you're so fat, literally. They would say you're so fat and I would think, okay, in order to get a boyfriend, to have a relationship, I have to be a certain weight. So yeah, there was that mentality for me that I wanted to be healthy and well, but I really, really felt pressure from people in my life to be at a certain weight. So it was very, I felt that my acceptance was conditioned upon my weight, sadly. And I carried that with me for a very long time. I had one boy, one boyfriend, he used to smoke a lot of marijuana. Ooh. And I don't support that. I, I didn't want that in my life and I didn't want that in his life. And it was so funny. He would say, okay, okay, I will discontinue smoking weed if you get down to 130 pounds. So, see what I mean? There were so many conditions put on me with regard to my weight over the years that it kind of did become ingrained in me a little bit that for me to be acceptable in society, I needed to be at a certain weight. I needed to lose weight. If I was overweight, I wasn't gonna be able to have relationships that I wanted. And then you look around at the magazines, the billboards and everything, and I saw what I saw in the mirror, and I saw what I saw in the magazines and on the billboards, and they did not align. And I saw that as a societal norm, and sadly, you guys, the reality is, society paints that as the norm. We all know that they're airbrushed and all kinds of stuff, but that does become the societal norm. And if you don't align with societal norm, then you do start thinking, maybe I'm not okay. You know, and that's so sad. That's so unfortunate. It shouldn't be that way. We are all so different and we come in all different shapes and sizes. And where I had to come to and where I still grapple with for myself is that as long as I'm healthy and I'm well and my internal numbers are good and I have the mobility that I need, then that's what's important. Not the size that I'm fitting in, not the number on the scale, not my body fat percentage. The number one important thing is my internal health and wellness, which then enables me to be mobile and do things with my family and hopefully extend my longevity and everything, right? So my focus is on health and wellness. 
for me and my internal numbers, but there can be that distraction with society and feeling like you need to meet a societal norm. That is there, that is a distraction. That's what I'm always trying to combat within myself. I'm always struggling, I always say I'm struggling with that 15 pounds, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15, maybe max 20, but I'm always struggling with that 10 or 15 pounds. So many of us are. And losing that 10 or maybe 15 pounds, especially if it's only 10, is that going to really affect my health numbers? No, not at all. Is it gonna affect my longevity? No, not at all. But do I still keep trying to fight for that 10 pounds off and get back to this number that I have? Yes, I do. And that is something that I put on myself to, to feel a certain way about myself. And that's what I'm grappling with. If you remember back in my first 2018 video, I said that one of my goals for this year is balance and to just figure out where I am best in my body. I still am thinking because my closet is screaming at me, <laughs> telling me, Debbie, you have all these clothes that you can only wear if you're 10 or 12 pounds less. So get on it, girl, and <laughs> lose the weight. So my drive and my incentive right now, if you will, is to get back into the clothes that are in my closet that I like to wear. There's certain things I like to wear and I do feel more comfortable when I'm lean. But a paramount importance to me is my internal health and wellness. And that is my driver. And that is what is sustainable. So the key thing that we need to be asking ourselves is what is sustainable? Is doing something that is conditioned? I'll be your friend if you are at a proper weight. I'll be your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, if you're at a proper weight. Is that gonna be sustainable to maintain that health and wellness just for somebody else? I would say emphatically, no. Is it sustainable to be healthy and well just so that you can look like that picture on the magazine or the billboard? Unequivocally, no. Sustainability and health and wellness has to come from within. It has to be intrinsically motivated in order to really have it be sustainable. But sometimes we do have to get our arms around that and realize that society is trying to influence us and is that what is best for us you know so i know i remember too but one of the greatest gifts i gave to myself many many years ago to realize that my body is my body and i need to make my personal body the very best that it can be the very healthiest that it can be, but for my personal body and not compare myself, and <laughs> myself, <laughs> nice dub, not compare myself to others who don't have the same body type that I do or the same metabolism that I do. I need to compare myself to myself. I think that it's really, really important to really get a grip on that. Don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to yourself and we can sometimes be trapped and feel like, why don't I have those long, lean legs that so-and-so does? Or why don't I have a six-pack abs like so-and-so does? Well, maybe you're, you're, maybe that's just not something that's going to be for you. I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But don't try to be somebody else. Be the very best that you can be with the body that you were given. So. That's all I got to say about all that. I kind of went on and on, but I just thought this was a really interesting topic. And I know my fellow collaborators are feeling like it's kind of a simple question, and it is, but leave it to me to overanalyze, right? There goes Debbie overanalyzing everything, as people say to me, but that's okay. Anyway, that's it for Journey to Health, week seven collab so be sure to look at all of the other fellow youtubers who are participating in this journey to health collab i will have them all listed in the description below and you'll get to hear their perspectives on this very same question that i answered and please you guys i know that youtube is changing all of their rules and their policies and everything and i'm trying not to get caught up in that frenzy but i do feel it a little bit so if you would be ever so kind as to push that red button to subscribe to my channel if you like my content and push that like button and leave me a comment. 
tell me if you think I'm completely out of whack on this or if you think I'm right on point. And the fam bam just came in, so perfect timing. I'm gonna end this right now. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye guys.